Hey friends, in today's video, I'm going over my controller binds. This has been one of my most frequent comments. So let's just start from the top. Eight look sensitivity, 1.0 ADS modifier, and 0.7, not 0.8 sprint turn scale. This just feels a lot smoother. My dead zones are at 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. I do not advise just copying these. You gotta find out the perfect number for yourself. And how do you do that? You lower it as low as you can until you start experiencing stick drift where you're not touching the stick and your character is automatically moving. And then you just up it by like one or two. So if I was experiencing stick drift at zero, I bump it up to two. You want the axial to be one lower than radial because that's like the default. Basically what that means is it's going to preference horizontal movement over diagonals. A good test is to just sprint and see if your character stays in a perfectly straight line. If your character is like zigzagging like this, you probably want to increase that dead zone so that it can stay more horizontal or more vertical. Hope that makes sense. Now the button layout is going to be kind of interesting here. I have to show you my controller software first and let me get out of the menu. Currently I'm using a Nikon Revolution controller. I really, really like this controller. I used to use this to have some sort of dead zone skip setting where I moved the right stick to start at 20% tension. Since they added that feature in the game, I no longer have to use that. The only thing I will say is I have four paddles on the back. The four paddles are mapped to jump, reload, swap, and slide or crouch. And then sometimes I have two functions on the same paddle. As you can see, the X button and the B button are mapped to D-pads. This is so that when I bind controls in Destiny, I can arbitrarily add a D-pad function and then claw to hit X or B. When I play a Titan, I usually use B as my barricade and I just claw to hit it if I need to hit it instantly. So that's how I do that. On the back of my controller, the paddles, let's rotate this as one, two, three, four. I attach these like little rubber furniture stopper grips. It just like prevents furniture from sliding around. I'll just link it in the description below. They're like little rubber stickers and it helps me get a better grip so that I can have like a raised surface to easier uh, press these buttons. So I'll show you what this looks like in game now. So top left paddle, Crouch, bottom left paddle, swap weapons, top right paddle, jump, bottom right paddle is my reload. But it's also more than a reload. It's revive my teammate. It's also a combination bind where if I hit that paddle and then immediately hit my melee button, it throws a shuriken. If I hit him at the exact same time though, it just is a normal melee. And I have it like this because Revenant Hunter is a difficult class to play on controller. You have to have a Shatter Dive Bind, which I have to click the stick and press B to do. You have to have a Combo Melee Bind for the Ability Melee. And if I was using like Glaciers or something, I might want to punch them. Because you don't want to accidentally throw the Withering Blade when you mean to punch somebody or to punch a Crystal. Sure, you could shoot the Crystal, but it's a lot better, more ammo efficient to just punch it. And then you have the Dodge. So, since you can't dodge in the air, you would think you just make Shatter Dive in the air. But if you press it too close to the ground, it'll prioritize the dodge, just like you saw right there. So the solution is to make a combo bind. And then it will always prioritize the Shatter Dive so that if I had to like do a double press or something, my character is going to be all the way up there before it activates. Whereas with a combo bind, I can just... I was still off cooldown there. I can immediately do it and not show my head over cover. So yeah, if I shoot and then simultaneously press uh, the paddle while I'm shooting and then move to the bumper, it's pretty seamless. And I can aim the right stick while doing this motion. So overall, this very, very wonky setup is only because of Revenant. And then when I play other classes, I borrow some of these key binds. So we're going to go through all of them real quick. Remember, this isn't the X button. It's a paddle. 
So paddle plus bumper. Charge and uncharge melee. On some classes, like shoulder charge titan, I'll reverse it. I'll do something like this. So if I ever need the rare uncharged melee while I have the shoulder charge primed, I have the, the button combo for that. And yes, I have to do this every time I switch characters. I wish they had some sort of like preset. Toggle crouch I have on down D-pad because sometimes in PvE, you just want to hold the crouch on like a head glitch or something. Breakout doesn't matter. Titan barricade is my physical B button since I changed that to be the D-pad. I showed you the air dive. It's a combo bind. Hunter dodge is my right stick click. So is my Icarus dash. And so is my Titan thruster. And if I really wanted to, I could probably D-pad power weapon, but it doesn't come up enough to warrant. I can even do all my shatter skating and whatnot without having to swap it. So this is the specifics for my Revenant. Shoot, shatter dive, dodge immediately, swap weapons instantly, throw the grenade, time the shatter dive perfectly, all the above. There is no limiting factor on Revenant Hunter anymore. Okay, now let's demonstrate some Titan classes. I want to start with Strand Titan. So whenever I play Strand Titan, I make a couple changes here. Uh, the first is going to be Charge Melee becomes right thumb click because I consider the melee a dodge. And if I was using Kepri's Horn, I would even change the barricade to be like a combo bind or something so I could do it without taking my uh, hand off the right stick if I had to. So you don't have to copy my binds one to one, but use like my reasoning as inspiration to find your perfect binds, your perfect sensitivity. I could even speak to that sensitivity too, like why eight, why not 20? It's because I like to hip fire. I like to keep my sights aligned from the hip. Be able to cut the pie like that from the hip. I also, when I slide, I can easily get to my 90 degrees before the slide finishes without the use of speed boots. See, I'm on just lying rampant here. Can still get 90 degrees. Let's uh, finish talking about Strand Titan here. So Strand Titan on controller is unique because if I use the melee ability, I can immediately melee to the right. So it would look something like this. Whereas on mouse and keyboard, I have to flick to the right, then melee. And if I don't wait just enough time, it'll go forward and throw me out of cover. And finally, we're on my Dawn Blade. That's another class that has a lot of extra vines. So we'll go with Charge Melee, Combo Bind, because I don't always want to use the Solar Melee. And then Regular Melee on right bumper. And it's already set up for Icarus Dash on the right thumbstick. And so if I press Jump in that simultaneously while on the ground, it will just auto Icarus Dash. It's so amazing. I know that there's a way to set up Snap Canceling on Warlock on Controller. But honestly, it, it's... Probably going to catch a nerf at some point, and I really don't want to get used to it when I'm already have to give up so much to have specific binds. So, yeah, I can obviously, like, Icarus Dash Skate or whatever it is. Chain the movement. There you go. It's automatic. Don't even have to think about it. Rare Rift. I just hit the face button. You might think that it comes up on Phoenix Dive, but it doesn't. Because even if you take your thumb off the right stick, the Phoenix Dive cares about what your left stick is pointing to. And so then, like, look, this is normal melee, right? I get to choose between that or a combo bind. You can't even tell the difference. Hold for heat rises. My fingers are on a paddle at each time, so I can, like, purposely drop my elevation and catch it. Just really, really focus on that hip fire aim. That nice, very, very slow, methodical tracking to make my controller as accurate as possible and as consistent as possible. Because let's be real, what am I gaining by playing 20 cents controller when I could just switch to mouse and keyboard on PC? The answer is console has a different sandbox and I like that sandbox a little better at the current moment. So I wanna play the most consistent version of controller that I can without making it my main input device. Like if I only played controller, yeah, I could probably get used to very, very high sense and be very consistent at it. 
But the reality is, I play both, so I have to sink time into both. And so I'd rather just play a slower, easier to grasp sense. I hope that this video was valuable and inspires you to make some changes to your scheme to let you do a lot of actions simultaneously. Like I said, I think Revenant Hunter is the hardest class to build around, but I would also argue that Strand Titan gets pretty technical too. And if you start adding snap skating and well skating to that, it gets even crazier on controller and honestly there's just not enough buttons. I know that the Razor Wolverine controller for example has an extra button by the bumpers, so two extra buttons. And that could be used for arbitrarily remapping the D-pad. But keep in mind that there is, what do they call it, an SOCD cleaning or something like that, which prevents you from simultaneously hitting opposite directions on the D-pad. And in Destiny, that is kind of baked into it in some way. It might not be specifically what it is, but effectively it stops you from using uh, some combo binds if it involves certain sections of your D-pad. So just keep that in mind whenever you're making these. Anyway, friends, that's like too much technical jargon. It's specific to each controller. Every controller is different. I don't have perfect binds. Nobody does. But it's really, really nice to look at what other people are doing so you can find your own perfect binds. See y'all in the next.